Nardine Jeffries. Am I pronouncing that right? Yes. Nardine Jeffries. Uh, the daughter, your daughter was murdered in a drive-by mass shooting in December of 2010. March 30th, 2010. March 30th. Thank you very much. Oh, in D.C., in Washington, D.C. That's where the... And, on, um, and your website is OccupyTheNRA.com. Um, can you tell us your thoughts on what happened yesterday, where you were, what was going on, and, and about this OccupyTheNRA.com? Well, the OccupyTheNRA.com is not my website. That's actually Aaron um, Black's website. I see. But um, my thoughts were um, it was very uh, disgusting. I just thought it was a slap in the face of all the victims and future victims that will um, have an early demise to gun violence. Mm-hmm. Nardine, you, uh, Jeffries, you, you're the victim. I mean, your daughter was the victim of of a mass shooting of uh, it was what wasn't it a bunch of guys with AK47s in a truck who just did a drive-by shooting kind of thing do i have that right uh, no not exactly okay, there, can you tell me there about were it? four um, individuals in a rented van one had an AK47 mm-hmm. one had a 9 millimeter, mm-hmm. and one had i think it was a 45 or 48 some other type of semi-automatic weapon mm-hmm. and they were out to seek revenge on um, the mourners of of a funeral that my daughter and others had attended earlier that day. Uh, So they had killed an individual a week before and injured others and were out for more blood and saw the group of young people um, standing on the sidewalk gathering, listening to iPods, conversing, doing what millions of, of Americans do every day. You know, it wasn't the a lot of people say wrong place, wrong time, and I don't like that statement because my daughter was in her neighborhood, in her community, where I'm a homeowner, a tax-paying citizen, and a law-abiding citizen. So she was exactly where she belonged. Yep. The violent offenders were not where they belonged. Yep. Amen. And and since that time, you have become a real activist for, um, you know, never again. In this, and tell us about your activism. Tell what advice do you have to our listeners and our viewers? Well, first, I like to say that um, my advice is just to not give up. I don't want, you know, I think a lot of people seem to get confused with the Second Amendment rights and feel like myself and a lot of advocates are trying to, you know, infringe on your constitutional rights, which that is not the case at all. Um, I just think it's it's kind of sad that you have to go through the proper channels to get a driver's license and and have you know proof of insurance and go through all of these steps to drive a vehicle. But when it comes to a, a, a gun, something that takes so many lives, you can purchase that as easily as buying a candy bar, and no one seems to have a problem with that. Hmm. And what, in your mind, is the best that we can do about this? What should we be doing about this? Well, there's a lot of different things that should be done. I mean, we definitely need to keep, um, mo- first of all, we need a lot more activities in, in some, some areas. There needs to be, in my opinion, more things to occupy young people and engage them in more constructive activities. You mm-hmm. know, once you start closing down a lot of community centers and you start taking away music and art and, you know, the physical activities out of schools as well as vocational programs, I think you kind of are leaving them with nothing but idle hands and idle minds. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of, you know, parents have to work and a lot of parents are not, or children are not into family incomes, you know, two-parent incomes of families, I mean, and you have the single parents. I was a single mother, but did that mean I left my daughter to just roam the streets and do whatever she wanted? No, there was a lot of structure. I took her to school. I picked her up from school. I was there with her. I monitored her with things. I gave her permission that day to walk down to the corner and drop off a backpack. So I just feel like, you know, as a society, it doesn't cost anything to smile. It doesn't cost us anything to say hello, to be pleasant. You don't know how that makes a difference to that next person. That mm-hmm. might be the nicest thing they've heard all day, maybe in their lifetime. You know, I just think we need to go back to being a much more conscious and 
you know, compassionate society. And we definitely need to do background checks and make sure mentally ill people do not get guns and, and very violent offenders. Like I said, you know, it, you, you take their rights away when they, they're, they're arrested. But when they come back into society, you know, they can't vote. And it's certain, you know, it's certain things they cannot do because they're, rights have been taken away from them mm-hmm. once they become a felon. But it seems that, you know, the right to take a life has not been taken away from them. That's very accessible. And, you know, we have to come at various angles, like I said, engage the young people, you know, give them the the belief that you can dream. You know, it, it's sad when I talk to young people and they tell me that there's, they don't, they haven't planned their life beyond the age of 18 because they don't think they're going to live beyond that. Mm. And that's scary to me and very sad. And I think we as a society, as human beings, need to continue to reach back and reach out and reach, you know, reach everyone. We, we can do, if you know, we can't change society as a whole, not one person, but if we as an individual can make a difference in that little world and that space that we actually occupy and the people that are surrounded in our little circle, guess what? That's where change begins. Yeah. As the father of three children, I cannot imagine your loss. I just, I can't even go there. And I have to just tell you how much I honor the work that you're doing, Nardine, Nardine Jeffries, and, and your speaking out, your activism, your voice, uh, your sanity, your compassion. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. And, and, and please keep up the great work. We'll be back. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. And the website associated uh, with, uh, that Nardine is most associated with is OccupyTheNRA.com. 